Hello everyone, this is Petey from Bergs Arcade at BergsArcade.com and this is another little question and answer period where I take questions that are either asked uh, on the forums at Bergs Arcade or the comments left on uh, YouTube. Now I don't answer the PMs in YouTube. Uh, I get a lot of them every day and honestly most of them are sub for sub type stuff and I'm just, I just don't go to the PM stuff. It's, it's just so cluttered. But anyway, I do look at the comments usually for the last few videos anyway. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and answer a few of these questions. Okay, so this is on number 58, uh, creating an outdoor scene. Uh, I assume you meant to say how, but anyway, how do you get the uh, get that watercolor? Uh, it's been a while since I looked at that video, but I haven't really done a whole lot, at least back then. This is the original village. Uh, it's probably just the regular default. Uh, you can actually go over if you select your water and go over to your inspector. Uh, if you look at the shaders and materials and everything else, you can play around with a few of them depending on the water you're using. Uh, but that's pretty much it for that. I don't recall actually playing around with it that much. Uh, it might just be that uh, I'm using the pro version and the pro version has a few more options than uh, the free version. Uh, so the next one, it's on 115, uh, bonus, swimming. I have no idea why mine won't work. I'm using JavaScript, and I'm not saying the actual names, because since these are generally people having trouble with stuff, uh, there's no point in pointing out names. But anyway, uh, but it shouldn't make a difference. I'm using JavaScript, but okay. So you're not using C-sharp, you're converting it from the JavaScript. First off, there's going to be a few things that you can't do in JavaScript that we're going to be doing in C-sharp. I'll let you know that ahead of time. Uh, you're already on 115, so you're about halfway caught up. Uh, yeah, anyway, there's things that you won't be able to do in, in JavaScript. And there's going to be actually a fair amount of things later on that you can't do in JavaScript, uh, at least efficiently. So I just bite the bullet and learn C-sharp. Uh, anyway, when I hit the water, uh, gravity isn't disabled, so uh, I move below the collider. A setting is swimming to true. So it's setting is swimming to true, but you're still going below uh, the water. So here's the piece of code if is swimming. Oh, sorry, if not is swimming. Uh, throw some debug log statements in there. Like, If your actual flag for is swimming is being switched to true and you're still going under the collider, I'm not sure why that would be. Uh, if I set is swimming to pub as a public, I can see it in the spec that it is set to true uh, for a little amount of time, but gravity does not stop. I'm using the FPS Walker script uh, with a character controller. Any, any idea? I don't think I'm using the FPS Walker script. So the problem probably is in there. They probably have some sort of gravity applied in there. Check that out. Uh, but uh, yeah, for the code that you have listed here, I don't know why gravity isn't getting turned off. It, it should. So it has to be in the FPS Walker script. Uh, next question. It's on number 15, character stats 5 of 7. Uh, the member modified stat dot adjust base value does not hide an inherited member. The new, key, new keyword is not re, uh, the new keyword not required. What's what's wrong? Okay, uh, again, it's been a while since I've looked at videos from way back then. Uh, but take a look. Uh, let's see, modified stat inherits, I believe, from stat. So stat should have an adjusted base value. And we're using the new keyword in the modified stat to override what was in the uh, the base stat. Uh, so make sure that you have the adjusted base value typed the exact same in both scripts. And that's why you're getting that there. Well, I guess it might just actually be a warning. But anyway, that's why that's occurring. Uh, let me see, this one's on 32, saving character data, 6 to 6. Uh, did you forget how to put the, my tongue's a little tied up. <laughs> a little bit of coffee will fix that. Okay. At Bergsberg Arcade. Did you forget to put the fix... Did you forget to put how to fix the problem? I'm actually adding a few words in here. Uh, some of the people don't speak native English. And like I said, my tongue's also a little tongue-tied this morning. But anyway, 
Uh, did you forget how to? Or did you forget to put how to fix the problem uh, we had in the previous video? Uh, it's the problem where when you save your vitals, don't get a value and they stay at zero. Uh, that's on number thirty-two. I'm not sure when I implemented that code fix. Uh, but it works now. <laughs> I'm on two fifty-one. I just finished. Uh, it's working. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm not sure when it worked. I just keep watching in the video. Uh, I'll show you when I do it. Uh, when mine are working and yours still aren't working, then you probably missed it. Uh, I'm not sure what number I put it in. So the next one's on 21. Uh, please help. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's that's it. That's all you wrote is please help. And these are the reasons why I, I won't answer you. It's just help with what? But anyway, I'm just going to delete that one. Uh, next is 25, or did I forget this one? Yeah, I, for I forgot this one here. Sorry about that. Number four, uh, thank you. This is awesome. Uh, well, glad you enjoyed it. I hope you're learning something from it. And I didn't mean to delete that, but uh, it's on number four. So when I'm editing this, make sure I go back and thank him. <laughs> anyway. Uh, and I'll be answering these in text uh, while it's uh, encoding. But anyway, I love the tutorials. I only had one huge error with tutorial number 16. Uh, this is on number 25, character creation 5 of 5. Uh, but I got that fixed. Keep it, keep it, it, pedia. Keep it, it, P okay, I'm not, keep it up, pedi, maybe? Uh, anyway. Uh, one thing that I would ask is whether or not you could zoom in on the scripts like you did uh, in the earlier segments. Uh, that really helps me. Uh, that really helps my coding and scripting. Thanks for everything. Uh, in some of the earlier ones, I did. I was jumping around between 720p and 1080p. Uh, I've gone back when I was doing all the zooming and everything else. Those were the 1080p ones. I've gone back just to using 720p because 720p works well on. Most devices, like a, like an iPad or something, an iPad or something like that of that size, I find it works great for looking at. Uh, it's still a little small on tinier cell phones and stuff like that. Uh, but there's not much I can do about that. I'd prefer not to be zooming in and out. That's why I'm using 720p. Uh, even on a modern screen, on some of the screens that I have, uh, some of the smaller ones, like this one here. Uh, which is 17 inch. This is what the camera is mounted on right now. Uh, it's a 17 inch and it's uh, the old white uh, white iMac. So we're looking at uh, 1440 by 900 and I can see everything fine on it. So yeah, basically, no, I'm not going to be zooming in and out on stuff. Not while I'm only doing them in 720p. Uh, I can't really think of anything to help you with. Get a bigger monitor. I know it's not the answer everyone wants to hear, but if I can view them well on a 17 inch, you know, sure, it might require pausing and a little alt tabbing and stuff like that, but I assume you're probably pausing and looking at the code that I'm writing as you type it in a way. I'm pretty sure you're not typing it in, in real time. But anyway, uh, next is on number five. Uh, how do you get Unity so dark? I assume you're talking about the pro skin, uh, like the black skin. Uh, that just it was one of the perks when you got uh, when you have Unity Pro, it comes with an extra skin. So instead of being gray, you can click a button and it goes to a dark look. Uh, but honestly, under the preferences for Unity, they have a color selector and you can set the whole thing up to look exactly the same. Uh, it's just they gave the pro people who own Pro that special, you know, one click to go there. Uh, but there's nothing special about it, you can set that up yourself. Uh, that was a number five. This is number nine. Uh, okay, that was actually someone else. So the next comment's on number 52, uh, targeting 2.0, 2 of 3. Uh, mine tab will select and cycle through, uh, but it won't show the name. I have no errors, and then when I deselect it, only selects one mob and won't keep cycling. Uh, if you're not getting any errors, what I would do is go ahead and use uh, a lot of debug log statements, start peppering them in there, and uh, like, you have to figure out exactly where, where it's going wrong. 
and that's probably the easiest way to do it. It's just throwing a bunch of debug log errors, or sorry, a bunch of debug log statements. Uh, once you figure out where something's going wrong, it's pretty easy to actually just go back to the code and take a look. I uh, get used to the debug log statement. It's your friend. That's uh, the easiest way probably to debug your your Unity application. And I have seen some people that said that they don't like using debug log because uh, they don't want all this extra code in their program when uh, they compile it and send it out. Uh, Unity actually strips that out, uh, all your debug statements when you compile it. So you know, leave it in. It doesn't really hurt anything. Uh, you could build a whole system to... Uh, well, we won't even get into that, but yeah, it doesn't hurt anything leaving it in. It's great for when you're testing, and Unity will strip it out. Uh, but anyway, there's a few questions there that I answered for you. Uh, hopefully that helps a few of you out there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and code this video, and while it's encoding, I'm going to go ahead and uh, send these uh, comments out in text. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.